much for joining us for Cyber Bible Study on tonight. On behalf of Bishop Daryl J. McClary Sr. and Pastor Jessica T. McClary, I welcome you to tonight's Bible study. So before we get into the word, we are going to say a word of prayer, all right? Father God, as we come before you tonight, we tell you thank you, God. We thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for this time that we will share the word of God. We thank you for the change that will take place in our lives as a result of this word. We thank you for transformation, oh God. And we thank you that we will not only be hearers of this word, but we will become doers of your word so that your glory might be seen in our lives. For that tonight, we say thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we say amen. Amen. So tonight, our word is going to be prevailing prayer. That is our subject for tonight, prevailing prayer. And we're going to be reading 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'm going to read for you verses 9 through 10, as well as verses 12 through 18. And I will be reading this out of the New Living Translation. That's 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. All right, so let's go there on tonight. Verse 9 says, Once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli, the priest, was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Verse 10 says, Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And we're going to go down to verse 12. It says, as she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her, seeing her lips moving but hearing no sound. He thought she had to have been drinking. Must you come here drunk, he said. He demanded, excuse me. Throw away your wine. Oh, no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I am very discouraged. And I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I am a wicked woman, for I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Verse 18 says, oh, thank you, sir. She exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. All right, prevailing prayer. So here we are introduced to Hannah, who is the wife of Elkanah. Hannah's name means grace or gracefully. And I want to let you know that Hannah was provoked to a place of prevailing prayer. All right, she was provoked by Penina who was Elkanah's other wife. She was provoked possibly by Penina's children, as well as Penina's husband, which was also her husband. But uh, Hannah was being taunted, she was being teased because she could not bear Elkanah any children. All right, so she was provoked by Penina because Penina began, she uh, continued to taunt her, continued to tease her and throw it up in her face. Um, she had to stand on the sidelines and watch Elkanah and Penina raise their children, all right? Even though Elkanah loved her, there was still something missing as it relates to their relationship. So these things were uh, things that provoked Penina, all right? Not only was, uh, excuse me, these things provoked Hannah, but not only were these things provoking to Hannah, but Hannah's situation was permitted. And you see that in verse 6 of this uh, first chapter of 1 Samuel. And I'm going to read that for you. It says um, in verse 6, it says, So Penina would taunt Hannah and make fun of her because the Lord had kept her from having children. So her situation was permitted. There are times we may not even understand that the uh, God has permitted us to be in a certain place or a certain situation because nothing catches him by surprise. He is the sovereign God. He knows our walk. He knows our way. Our steps are ordered by him. So when we find ourselves in situations and circumstances that may not be uh, very comfortable for us, we have to take um, 
have to have an assurance to know that God understands where we are and he's allowing us, he's permitting us to be in this place, all right? Because it is provoking us to another place, all right? It's getting us prepared, it's getting us ready to go to another place that God has for us. But in order for us to be ready, for that next place, for that next level, for that next dimension. God has to, uh, we've got to go through certain situations. And I know sometimes we don't want to go through those situations and circumstances because it's difficult. We, it's challenging and we don't, not all of us like challenges, all right? And especially when our mental state is being challenged because our emotions are being challenged. And here we see Hannah was being challenged because she was in a place where she was in a marriage with someone who she could not um, give to him all that she wanted to give, all right? So uh, not only was Hannah provoked, Hannah, her situation was permitted, but her situation was also prolonged, all right? And we see that in verse 7. Because it says that if you begin to read, if you read the entire chapter, you understand that Elkanah took his family up to the tabernacle once a year to give offering uh, to the Lord. And so in verse seven, it says year after year, it was the same. Penina would taunt Hannah as they went to the tabernacle. Each time Hannah would be reduced to tears and would not even eat. So this uh, speaks to the fact that her situation was prolonged. So year after year, Hannah had to go up to the tabernacle, go on this journey to Shiloh, and be taunted by Penina. It'd be thrown in her face once again that she was not able to bear children. And here comes Penina with all her children and, you know, just flaunting it in her face. All right, we may find ourselves in situations where we have been walking with people. We've been praying the same prayer. We've been in the same circle, uh, lifting the same thing up before the Lord. And some have received their answers and we're still waiting on ours. And then we have people that are may have been in that circle that seems to throw that up in your face. All right, whether it's by their actions or by their words. All right, but we have to understand that these are things that may be provoking us to a place of prevailing prayer, all right? Because even in my study, Hannah was Elkanah's first wife and they had been married for possibly about 10 years. And then after that is when he uh, became married to Penina and Penina was able to bear children, all right? So it may have been because of the fact that he loved Hannah, but Hannah could not give him children that he went to, um, Penina, and she was able to bear children. So could you just imagine when even you as a woman or as a man, you are not able to do for uh, your significant other, for your family, for your children, you know, you're, you want to do it, but you just have, you're not capable of doing it. God has you in a place right now where you're not able to do that. All right. But this is provoking us. All right. It's provoking us to a place of prayer. And this brings us down to uh, verse 10, excuse me, verse 9, where Hannah says, okay, you know what? Enough is enough. I've been going through this year after year. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. So what did Hannah do? She was, tired of, she was tired of being taunted because every year, even as a result of this taunting and her being provoked to this place, it was taking a toll on her. It was, it, was a, um, it was affecting her in such a way that all she could do was cry. She had, she had become so depressed that she couldn't even eat. And some of us have found ourselves in that place depending on what the situation is. You know, you, you're tired of going through this. You're tired of watching others pass you by. You're tired of seeing other people being able to do and being able to perform or being able to produce something that you have a desire to do. But it just seems like God has you in a place that you're not able to do it. But Hannah says in verse 10, it's, this is the time. She said, once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and she went to pray. All right. So there are three things that I want to allow you to know that you have to be ready to do when you're on your way or when you are uh, ready for that state of prevailing prayer. All right. 
first thing you have to do is you got to be ready to be real. And when Hannah got up from that meal and she went to the tabernacle to pray, she was ready to be real. All right. How do I know that? One of the things that she had to come to grips with is that she was bitter. She was angry. All right. She, even though she was hurt. Because she was tired of going through that thing. She was tired of being in this place where she was not able to produce. Where she felt incomplete. Where she felt like she was not whole as a woman because she could not perform this duty. She could not, um, she could not bear children. What is that thing that you have been, you're in a place where you're saying, God, you know what? I'm just tired of this. I'm, I'm re really, I'm angry. But she said, okay. She had to, she went to pray and prayer was her deliberate communication with him. She couldn't talk to anybody else because we see in this chapter where Elkanah was like, why are you crying? Isn't it enough that you have me? You don't, don't worry about having to have children. Sometimes things come out of our mouths and they can damage people. What, you know, we can diminish people's feelings and we have to be careful about the words that come out of our mouths okay we got to be careful about what we um try to force on people okay just because you are okay with not being able to do something doesn't mean that i'm okay with it you know i might have a great desire to do or to be a certain thing but i can't express that to you i may not be able to express that to anyone but when I get to the place where I'm tired and it's time for me to take this thing to God, I've got to be delivered in my communication. All right. So Hannah was ready to be real with God. And in verse 10, when she went up to the tabernacle and she said, I'm going to pray. She was in deep anguish. She was crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. So she, even as she was communicating to God, she was being real with him. She was allowing him to know that she was bitter. She was allowing him to know she was angry. All right. She was allowing him to know this thing is hurting me because deep anguish is extreme mental pain or suffering. All right. So not that she was in physical pain, but she was in mental pain and anguish. She was suffering mentally because she's sitting in this situation. She's in this place where she doesn't know what to do. She's tired of being teased and taunted. She's tired of her husband just reducing and diminishing her feelings. But she had to be real with God and allow him to know that this is how I'm feeling. And I'm coming to you and I'm crying out to you. All right. She was at a place of discouragement. All right. She was at a place where her, all her confidence was gone. And we've got to be real. We've got to allow God to know, you know what? I've been in this place too long. I'm tired of watching everybody go ahead of me. I'm tired. All right. You just got to be real with him. All right. Be real with God. That's the one person that you can be real with. All right. You might not be able to be real with those that are around you in your circle, but you can be real with God. And in order for us to get to that place of prevailing prayer, We've got to be ready to be real. All right. Not just with God, but with people, because even after uh, Eli was watching her in prayer, when when uh, she finished praying, Eli had a conversation with her. So the second thing I want you to do, I want you to know is you've got to be ready to release. All right. So even in prayer, after Eli was like, OK, don't come here drunk. Of, of all things, don't come here drunk. But uh, uh, Hannah had to let allow him to know, I'm not drunk. In verse 15, well, in verse 14, Eli said, must you come here drunk? He demanded, throw away your wine. She said, no, 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 sir. I have not been drinking wine or anything stronger. So she had to be real even with Eli. So after coming out of prayer, being real with God, she had to be real with people. All right. Because people are watching people. Um, they may not know exactly what you're going through, but our actions speak. All right. Our actions speak loud sometimes. All right. So, um, Hannah had to not only be real in prayer, but she had to also be real when Eli came to her. So she told him, I am very discouraged lost confidence. All I see around me is negativity. All right. 
She said, but I had to pour out, but I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. That's where the release comes from. She had to pour out everything before the Lord. All right. Because year after year after year after year, she had to release that stuff. All right. Because there are some things that we have been holding on to because people have done to us. People have said things to us. It hurt us deeply. They teased us. They taunted us. They continue to do stuff. And uh, they continue to throw the rock and hide their hands. They continue to lie on us. They continue to put us in uncomfortable situations. And we've been holding on to those things. But it's time to release it. When we get into the place of prevailing prayer, prevailing prayer means you got to be ready to release. Hallelujah. Hannah had to release Penina from her taunting. She had to release Elkanah from reducing her feelings and making her feel like having children was not important and she didn't need to have children because she had him. No, she had to release all of that. And I came to encourage you tonight to let you know that there are some people and there are some things that you've got to release. If you are ready to experience prevailing uh, prayer and you're ready to get into the place where you prevail in prayer, one of the things you got to do after being real with God is releasing those things, letting go of those things that will hinder you from getting your prayers heard and answered by God. All right. So Hannah had to release that thing. All right. Because the word of God tells us that we can trust in him. We have to trust him at all times. Psalm 62 and eight says, trust in him at all times, pour out your heart to him for God is our refuge. That's your safe place. When you, um, have deliberate communication with him. When you, you can be real in the presence of God. You can be real because he is your refuge and every, whatever it is that you release before him is safe. All right. It's a secret. He's going to hold it. He's not going to hold it against you, but he will carry it for you. But you've got to be willing to release it to him. Tell him exactly how you feel. Tell him your anguish. Tell him your resentment, resentfulness. You know, you've been resenting some things and some people and you couldn't share that with anyone, but you can share it with God. You can allow him to know that God, this thing hurt me. I don't, God, I've been, I've been holding on to it, but I am ready to release it. You've got to make up in your mind that you're ready to release people from the things that they've done to you because God knows why things happen. He knows why you had to experience those things. He knows why you had to go through the hurt. He knows why you had to be lied on because there are some things and some places, there are some things he wants to get to you, but there are also some places he wants you to get. All right. There are some places that he wants us to get even in him, in our relationship with him. But in order for us to get there, there are some experiences that we're going to have to go through. All right. There are some things that we're going to have to feel. All right. But we've got to know that he's carrying us. We've got to know that he has us. So we've got to be one, ready to be real, two, ready to release. And the third thing is we've got to be ready to resume. All right. Because even after Eli and Hannah had this, this conversation, and she was real with God. Then she was real with Eli. Eli said to her after she told him that I was in great anguish and sorrow. He said, well, in that case, go in peace. All right. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Go in peace. The word peace, the, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. The Greek word for peace is Arier. Arene, excuse me, uh, which means a state of totality or completeness, success, fulfillment, wholeness, or well-being. So peace is not just a, a simple word of go and, you know, all will be well, but it is a power packed word. Yes, all will be well, but also Eli said to her, go in peace. Be whole, be healed, whatever it is that you have requested of the Lord, may he grant it to you. But so uh, Hannah had to walk away. She received that word peace in its fulfillment, 
in its totality. She received the word go in peace as it was meant. Because in this case, at this point, because she was real, because she made a release, she could now go on and resume life knowing that her request was going to be granted. She, was going to, she wasn't going to focus on what was going on around her. She wasn't going to allow the taunting and the teasing to uh, affect her the way that it used to because she had an assurance now because she was going in peace. Hallelujah. She was going to resume life. To resume means to begin to do or pursue again. So she was going after life again. She was going to live her life in such a way that she was not going to hold her head down. That she was not going to be depressed. That she was not going to allow her mental state to be compromised. But she was going to go in peace believing that her body was made was being made whole that her body was going to come into alignment with the word of God that her body was going to come into alignment with the promise of God so after you are real after you have made the release it's now time for you to resume it's now time for you to go after God in such a way that you believe that he will do exceeding and abundantly above all that you can ask or think because once you have made that release, you are now positioning yourself to receive the promise that God has for you. You can now go in peace. You can now walk, hallelujah, with your head up high. When you walk into, when you encounter someone that is already holding the blessing and the promise that you are still waiting for, you can embrace them with love. You don't have any animosity in your heart. Because God is going to do for you what he said he's going to do. All right. So I just want you to be encouraged on tonight. Hallelujah. That once you are being, or once you're ready to be real. All right. Let God know exactly how you feel. Let God know what is going on on the inside. Hallelujah. Because you can't talk to everybody about everything. But God is there. He's waiting. He's waiting for you to have a deliberate conversation with him where you have uh, made up in your mind that I'm tired. Hallelujah. Of letting this thing affect me in such a way that my life is being uh, tur turned upside down, that I'm allowing this thing to have more control over me than the spirit of God that lives on the inside of me. But it's time for you to take control. Take your life back. Take your life back. Take dominion back. Take dominion over this situation, knowing that once you release it unto God, once you pour out your heart before him, once you give it over to him, once you allow him, hallelujah, to make you free, once you, uh, once you throw that thing off, once you, um, Stop holding grudges. Once you release people from things that they've done to you, even unknowingly, because sometimes people are doing things and they don't even know that you are hurt behind that thing. Because I'm sure Elkanah didn't mean any harm when he said, Shh, don't even worry about the fact that you can't have children because I love you. Don't worry about the fact that you can't have children because you have me. He didn't mean any harm by that. And people may say and do things and they don't mean any harm, but we take offense to it and we take it to heart. But we've got to release those things. Hallelujah. Release people. God, I thank you. Because there's so much more that God has for us. He wants you to know that when you prevail in prayer, because what the word prevail means, hallelujah, is that you can overcome in spite of the situation, in spite of obstacles, you are going to, um, you're going to be victorious. You've got victory over that thing. You've got dominion over that thing. So after Hannah left the tabernacle, she poured out her heart before God. She was on her way to a new way of living. Hallelujah. She was on her way to a new place of dominion. Hallelujah. Because she wasn't just going to sit around the house watching and, and looking at Elkanah and Penina and feeling sorry for herself. But she had already received a promise of peace and answered prayer. So we've got to prevail in prayer. She spent some quality time in that tabernacle. She spent some quality time talking to God, allowing him to know where she was, how she was feeling. She released it. She released Elkanah. She released Penina. And she said, you know what? I'm going in peace. 
I'm going believing that God is going to answer my prayer. She went believing that God was going to answer her prayer. She resumed life. She began to eat again. She began to smile again. She began to laugh again because Ali, who God, I thank you. Because when you know that God is going to answer, when you know that you have prevailed in prayer, you can walk in such a way that you will begin to look for the promise of God. Hallelujah. You won't begin to focus on what you see, but you'll look beyond what's going on in the now and you will begin to rejoice knowing that God is about to bring this thing to pass. I know I don't see it now, but God, you gave me a promise. I know it doesn't look like it's, it's, um, it's, it's working in my favor, but God, you gave me a promise. So we've got to resume life in such a way that we're looking beyond the circumstance and knowing that he is well able to do exactly what he said he's going to do. We got to prevail in prayer like Hannah did. Once she left that thing at the altar, she resumed life. She knew that her life was going to be greater. She knew that that promise was coming. So I encourage you tonight, prevail. Prevail in prayer. Prevail in prayer. Hallelujah. Prevail in prayer. I just want to read this one thing for you. Hallelujah. I want to get back to the actual definition of the word prevail. It means to prove more powerful than opposing forces. The prayer that Hannah prayed that day, she knew that it was going to be more powerful. The result of that prayer was going to be more powerful than the taunts of Penina. The prevailing prayer that she prayed on that day was going to give her what she needed. It was going to give her the strength that she needed to endure, hallelujah, the taunts, to endure watching others be blessed prior to her being blessed because God was going to answer her prayer. And I came to tell you tonight, he's going to answer your prayer. I need you to prevail in prayer though. I need you to be ready to release. I need you to be ready to be real. And now it's time for you to resume. Walk your life out in such a way that you're not focused on the, the this didn't happen and who did this and who did that. And you know, they shouldn't have done. No, 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 no. Take your focus off of that. But I need you to live your life now in such a way that you are living in peace. Go in peace. Go and resume life. Be happy again. Let go of the, the anguish and the bitterness and the resentfulness. Let it go so that you can see all that God has for you. You're missing out on so much more because you're focused on the wrong thing. All right? But I need you to prevail in prayer knowing that your prayer is more powerful than any opposing force. You shall have victory. You shall see victory in this season. You shall see victory if you make a decision to prevail in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for this word. We pray that you will be blessed. We pray that you will get the spirit of prevailing prayer, that you will know that no opposing force will keep you from seeing what God has already promised you. I say go in peace, prevail in prayer. Be blessed.